I know everyone always thinks I'm completely mad saying that I like cooking on weekends that are meant to be relaxing, but I have to say, this is my only way of finding a bit of space for myself. And besides, you can play the martyr slaving over a hot stove when in fact you've got everyone else doing the hard work like bathing the children. It's a very good scam. And added to which, this is incredibly easy to make. It's a Carolyn fish curry and I probably should say straight off that I have never been to Kerala or anywhere near, but the point about Carolyn food or all South Indian food is that it is somehow fresher tasting, sour and with coconut milk, different flavours in North Indian food. A couple of onions here, cut into thin half moons, a bit of salt to stop them burning. And while they start frying, I'm going to go and get the fish. Use any white fish you want, I've used bream. Kilo and a quarter, thereabouts, cut into chunks. Want it thick enough to hold its shape while it's cooking. And it does take the barest moment to cook. And now a little bit of an operation. For this I need some turmeric, about a teaspoon here. Mm, beautiful golden powder. And again, a bit of salt. And I wouldn't normally do this, but the trouble with putting your hands in turmeric is that you get stained yellow. It looks like you've got a terrible sort of 50 a day habit. It's really worth doing this because this way the spices go deep into the fish. What I don't want is, you know, nice plain white fish cooked in a curry sauce. I want everything bathed and immersed in loveliness. I mean, this gives a golden colour to everything, but it does have a strange, sort of deep flavour of its own. The thing with all curries is about building up the level of flavours. Mm. <laughs> of course, now I have to get them off, but... <laughs> so, on top of these onions, a bit more spice. Again, turmeric, the same amount that was on the fish. In other words, teaspoon. Bit of ground cumin. Mm. I love the way this turns a deep ochre. Couple of more things for flavour and heat. Red chilies, two, and I like a lot of heat, so I leave the seeds in, but if you're in mellower mood, then just de-seed. And that's the fire, but there's a sort of deeper throated heat that comes from ginger, and this is about four centimeters or so, peeled and cut into little shards. But if you can be patient enough, just cook, stirring for a while so that the flavors go deep into the onions. So while this is happening, the sauce itself, well, it couldn't be easier. A can of coconut milk. And a tablespoonful or so of tamarind paste. I mean, you can buy the fruit dried and then you soak it in water and squeeze bits out. This is the easier option. And an old favorite, some concentrated stock, this time fish stock. Can't go anywhere without my little stocks. Now, I'm going to make this up to the litre mark with some water from the kettle. Stir it together. Just pour it in. And that's it. So once this has come to the boil, I'm just going to immerse the fish, give it a few minutes, and that's supper ready. Little taste. Mmm. I love the sourness of the tamarind against the sweetness of the coconut. And that's, frankly, all over by the singing, really. I'm going to turn it off and then go and say goodnight to the children. And then when I want to eat, because it could take some time, just need to reheat this, cook the fish in it for about four minutes, and supper's ready.
it is just gorgeous. Like the sourness. Mmm. Mm. Okay. It's <laughs> lovely. Does she get outrageous? And the fish is lovely. It's just firm and light. It's just gorgeous. It's so sour yes. and sweet at the same time. I mean, it's got a lot now, I think.